yesterday I came across a pair of Luke's boots. They still smell a little like him. I do stumble across this, this memory of him. At the same time, it's good to be here with him. He loved this place. The little boy that everyone saw in our movie, Arctic Sun, grew up to be a beautiful, loving, caring young man. His years at Kernwood and here in the wilderness helped to shape who he became. He had a deep love of this land, of, this, of the, the cabins that he helped build. He had a deep love of wilderness. Luke's first experience of wilderness was when he was um, 14 months old. We went to the Brooks Range and spent a summer on a, on a lake and uh, with my dad and my stepmother. It was interesting to watch him because Luke uh, never complained about the mosquitoes. He never, it never seemed to bother him that there was uncomfortable situations. He would crawl through the bushes after me uh, like a little bear cub eating berries. From spending ex extended periods of time in Alaska, uh, I've always felt that I was somehow different from other people. I've always been a little uh, separated from my friends and comrades in that they haven't had the same kind of experience as I have, and vice versa. When they were learning to shoot bas you know, baskets and basketball, play baseball, I was learning how to hunt and, uh, and to canoe and hike, so I just have different life experiences. A typical teenager, 14-year-old Luke Irons likes computer games. But even Luke says it can't compare to the real-life challenges of living hundreds of miles from civilization. Up there, it's so quiet that your ears ring at times. They really buzz because there's no sound. And unless you've experienced that, I can't explain it to you. And if you have, there's no point in me trying to. <laughs> For more than a year, Luke and his parents gave up modern-day conveniences to experience a simpler life, living in a log cabin deep in the Brooks Range in Alaska. When we returned to Tucson, when Lucas was 14, he looked at life a little differently. He, he took it more seriously, and he took himself more seriously. That was when he asked us to use his given name Lucas and I think it was a, uh, a mark of his coming into young manhood at that time. Luke was always his own person even from the time he was little. He had a really excellent memory. When we canoed that river when he was seven he remembered all the camps that we had stayed at I remember when we first got to our uh, cabin site when he was six, he went right to the place where we had camped and found the little tiny um, pile of sticks Tom had built with him that was um, a log cabin that we were talking about building. I don't think anybody's ever aware of their personal progress until they compare themselves, uh, the landmarks, with who they were before. Um, doesn't matter what you're studying, you don't really know how much you've learned until you go back and realize you already know something. So no, um, I guess I'd, you always assume that everyone's with you. And I experienced that very much. The second time I went up, I was more aware of it when I was 13. The, the ability to be introspective uh, and quiet was something that I never would have gained had I stayed mm -hmm. in, in society. Um, so that, yeah, that year was a real gift for me and I would... <laughs> I would give that to anyone if mm -hmm. I could. You'd give it to your own child? Absolutely, mm -hmm. in a heartbeat. When Lucas was an infant, he spent many hours of many, many days riding in a backpack on either his mother's or my back in the glass studio, looking over our shoulder as, as his mother was making patterns or selecting glass, looking over my shoulder as I cut glass as I built pan panels. Um, 
He enjoyed being in the studio. He learned to walk barefooted in a glass studio. Luke had a deep love for children and animals. He uh, tried hunting when he was 13. He wanted to get out and explore. He carried a rifle for a long time in the winter. He'd go out by himself. A hunting care would come in so cold. He was, uh, his fingers were practically frozen and he'd sit and warm his feet up in warm water and then he'd go out again. He wanted to do it alone. When he finally reached the point where he could actually um, get close to the caribou that were migrating through our valley, he, he got so he knew each of them practically by name, he decided he didn't want to shoot any of them. I, I think at first he, he was a little disappointed in himself. He thought that uh, the manly thing was to shoot things, but ultimately he was a healer. I just graduated with my uh, bachelor's in nursing and so I'm in the process of looking for a temporary home elsewhere in the country. Uh, my preferred destination right now I, I believe to be Washington State somewhere because uh, it's closer to Alaska, the environment is a little friendlier and I want to get out on my own someplace other than Tucson um, where I grew up. You just have to sort of spread my wings a little but I, I don't know, I have no idea where I'm going to end up or what I'm going to do or what I'm going to enjoy doing. I'm going to try this nursing thing out for a while. I think I'll fall in love with it and uh, hopefully move into more advanced uh, intensive care or emergency department nursing, travel nursing, who knows. He and I went to Guatemala when he was, I think, 17 and uh, volunteered with medical outreach down there. Actually, it was just the two of us uh, staying at a mission and we sort of tagged along on various uh, groups of people who came down, mostly medical students that were um, learning. And uh, Luke could speak excellent Spanish, so we went back in the hills carrying things into the mountains with, and seeing these people who lived with very little. And uh, Luke f felt very comfortable in that environment. In 1990, when Lucas was four, we had our first Wild River adventure in a canoe up in the Arctic Mountains. And that's where we discovered that in the face of adversity and unpleasantness, Lucas never complained. It could be cold, it could be wet, it could be a rough ground to sleep on, it could be gruel for breakfast, cold gruel for breakfast. It could be the chicken pox on a, on a cold and, and rainy river day. Mosquitoes galore, but Lucas did not complain. I, I have no memory of him ever complaining about the conditions that his parents put him into. He always uh, took everything in stride. I think a lot, I know a lot of people that would, that if they were taken up there, would adjust and would learn to like it. If their parents said, okay, I think we're gonna, you know, we're gonna go do this, that'd be okay. But I know a lot of people that would just be like, I cannot do this. It has to be your choice, it really does. And that was my choice to go up there, oh, yeah. the even toilet. though at that time it wasn't something that I wow. necessarily wanted. I, I chose that I've been this before, this is gonna be a completion, I'm gonna go up there and do it again. And so that was what it was for me. Look how much Luke's changed. Oh my gosh. One of the things about winter that you forget is it comes on slowly and as it snows you're excited for the snow and things freeze up. You don't notice how much the color leaves the world and you really are left with a black and white world sometimes. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have the, the light wood colors of the cabin and uh, some light blues and you have the sky but as far as like the ground, the earth tones, the greens, they're all gone and, uh, and you also lose the smells. You don't notice that until the springtime. Mm. But um, in the spring, when things start to thaw out, you go outside and you're, you're like, oh, you know, that you've been missing this whole other world as things start to thaw and you, you smell the earth coming up and you know, the snow. Yeah. It's, it's quite the experience to realize that for the last many months you haven't had color or smell in your world. 
uh, I feel that it defines me. It's given me gifts that, uh, that nothing else could replace.